look at the funk. Could you stop playing with that radio, y'all? I'm trying to get to sleep. Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Bar Silence. My name is Jameson, and I'm your host. Every episode of this show aims to explore the very best video game music from past to present. If you're new to the show, you can head over to barsilence.com where you can listen to past episodes, see track listings, as well as being able to click an easy link to subscribe on whatever your favorite podcatcher is. You can also listen to 8Beats Radio, where the show plays live on the first Tuesday of every month. Check it out at 8beats.co, or check the show notes to get a link to 8beats and all of the excellent DJ mixes and other video game music shows on the site. In this episode, we're going to be listening to the incredible soundtracks from the Jet Set Radio series of games that were released on the Dreamcast and the original Xbox. This soundtrack is impossibly complex in the way it captures a pure expression of underground culture, and Sega truly captured lightning in a bottle with this one. The first game was developed by Smilepit and published by Sega on the Dreamcast in 2000. Internationally, it's known as Jet Set Radio, but for legal purposes, the title was changed to Jet Grind Radio in America. Though for this show, we're just going to refer to it as Jet Set Radio. Back in 2000, when this game came out, Sega was in its first full year of the Dreamcast having been released, and it was establishing itself as the premier location for creative games, excellent next-generation graphics, and defined Sega's commitment to reviving that ultra-relevant, awesome brand of the 90s. The game's development was headed by director Masayoshi Kakuki, whose team had an average age of just 25 years old. Which is pretty crazy, right? The game was, by design, meant to capture the hearts and minds of the Y2K generation, now called Millennials, with a particular coolness factor unseen in just about any other game at the time. Jet Set Radio was one of the first games to not only offer an open 3D world, but also be one of the best executions of cel-shaded graphics as its art style. For those of us who might not know, this look uses exaggerated shapes, thick lines, and flat, bright colors to define the character models and the environment. The application of this look is literally dripping with style at every turn. The game's namesake comes from the pirate radio station called Jet Set Radio. It's used for plot narration and is broadcasted by the character DJ Professor K to gangs of youths known as Rudies. These gangs live in a fictional version of Tokyo called Tokyo Toe, who skate on magnetically driven inline skates and graffiti their turf to mark their territory against rival gangs. You and your team are called the GGs. These gangs are hunted by the nefarious Metropolitan Police led by Captain Onishima and the Rokaku group who have teamed up to stop them and their particular brand of coolness creating graffiti art across the city. 
As the game goes on, you discover pieces of a secret record called the Devil's Contract that when played can summon a demon. And the Rokaku group's leader is after that record in order to take over the city with this so-called demon's help. This game and its world was so innovative and unyieldingly cool that nothing quite like it has ever really managed to be released. Until recently, that is. In fact, Insomniac Games has actually noted that Jet Set Radio was an influence for the 2014 release of Sunset Overdrive. And indie developers have also credited Jet Set Radio as a heavy influence on games like Lethal League Blaze and the upcoming Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Which of course, both share the energetic musical genius of the CEO of Funky Fresh Beats himself, Hideki Naganuma. So, we open the show with Let Mom Sleep, which is the first song you hear when you start the game. It hits you right away with the energy and excitement of what you're getting yourself into when you start this game up. And underneath us now is an extended version of the track called Moody's Shuffle. In this next block of songs, we're going to hear Humming the Bass Line first, followed by That's Enough. And then last, we're going to hear the song Sneak Man to finish the block with this awesome 70s style guitar riffs and excellent combination of sampled elements including bits from LL Cool J's Mama Said Knock You Out from 1990 and Catch-22's Boogie Down To It from 1989. So enjoy these beats and stay tuned to Jet Set Radio on Bar Silence.
understand what's going on here. Give me a break. the Jet Set Radio soundtrack really special was the collection of tracks and composers that Hideki Naganuma assembled to craft the audio experience of the world in the game. Instead of playing these as a block though, we're going to do this one track at a time. First up, we're going to start with Funky Radio by BB Wrights. This absolute stunner of a track by BB Wrights pulls in a supersonic vibe of West Coast hip hop from the 1990s. It features that signature Dr. Dre inspired synth lead, and it has a rap breakout that sounds just like a great doggy style era Snoop Dogg impression. Additionally, the Go samples that get used in this are pulled from Run DMC's Peter Piper. This song definitely keeps its receipts, so let's hit it.
now that you're feeling real tipsy, uh, let me take you on a trip and roll with me. Will the brothers get their party on every day? Because we got to do that anyway. Hey, it's time to get on down to the funky, funky rhythm and the sound. Cause I gotta hit you up, big baby, and sock that woo like gravy. Yeah, bump that stuff in your trunk every day and let them big muscles know that we don't play. Hey, it's the fun coming through, hitting you every single day of the week. Yo, come on. Making music inspired by 90s hip-hop is all about capturing the flavor and style by honoring certain elements like funky samples, analog synths, and a heavy dose of spicy percussion. When these are all mixed correctly, it's a tasty recipe for a sonically iconic track that's impossible not to love. Up next, we're listening to the track Magical Girl by Japanese indie band Guitar Vader.
Guitar Vader formed in 1998 and disbanded in 2007. But their release of the Die Happy tape got the attention of Hideki Naganuma. As a lover of underground music, he added two of their songs to this game. Magical Girl first appears in the game during the tutorial stage and is pretty closely attached to the game's secondary main character, Gum. Cube was kind of always my choice, but Gum is also pretty cool, I'll admit. Next up, we're going to listen to Everybody Jump Around from the extremely talented Richard Jakes. Enjoy. Y'all ready to get funky? The most important part of dance is music. So now let us listen to the music and identify the beats. One. That was too soft.
Richard Jakes is an accomplished composer whose start at Sega Europe gave him the opportunity to capture the sound of the times with excellently crafted soundtracks for Sonic R, Sonic 3D Blast on the Saturn, Metropolis Street Racer, OutRun 2, and many other Sega releases. This song pulls samples from Cypress Hill's Insane in the Brain, B-Sides Change the Beat, and there's even a clip from Casablanca amongst many others. There are so many samples used in this song that craft this incredibly layered track that we'd have to become musical geologists just to get to the core of this one. Instead, we're going to acknowledge his genius and move over to the last track that's featured in all regions of the game's release. Take a listen to Electric Toothbrush by Toronto. Enjoy. Awesome. 
I've always had an affinity for house music, but this track effortlessly captures that busy and exciting sound of a metropolis in the early 2000s. Apparently, the name of this composer is actually used by Tominari Sawada. He did work at Sega at the time, but it's never actually been confirmed that he was the composer. Interestingly, I found out that in the game files, this song is actually called Sawad, so it's kind of hard to imagine it wasn't him. He has credits as a composer on Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for Game Gear, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, as well as Sonic & Knuckles. He also has later credits on Sonic Riders and the Mario & Sonic at the Olympic Games series. So, while the music for those games is quite a bit different than Electro Toothbrush, I'd love to hear what else he was making like this at the time, because this one is extraordinary. Up next, we're going to hear two tracks that were exclusive to the European soundtracks for this game. These tracks are both amazing. I'm not going to lie, I'm incredibly jealous of the Euro market for having these tracks to skate, grind, and graffiti to. First, we're going to hear Funky Plucker by Semi Detached and follow it with Many Styles by OB1 and then play them back to back. Funky Plucker is an excellent breakbeat and big beat style track that uses samples from 80s disco and early hip hop. It was a little hard to find information on Semi Detached, but their Chemical Brothers like sound was extremely popular and breaking waves across the world in the late 90s. Following that, we'll hear the rhythmic breaks Wonderland of Sound called Many Styles by OB1 that pulls samples from a tribe called Quest, Cool and the Gang, and the Incredible Bongo Band. So enjoy these tracks, and I'll be back afterwards to talk about the sequel released on the Xbox in 2002 called Jet Set Radio Future.
let's get scratching. On January 31st of 2001, Sega dropped the news that changed the gaming landscape. Just months after the PlayStation 2 was released, and about nine months before the release of Microsoft's Xbox and Nintendo's GameCube, Sega pulled out of the game console market and killed the Dreamcast. R.I.P. Dreamcast. Sega wasn't dead though. They decided to become a third-party developer, and for many games that were released on the Xbox system, they carried the mantle of the Dreamcast. Why Sega chose Microsoft is kind of up for debate. But the Dreamcast was powered by Microsoft CE, and the original Xbox was launched with Xbox Live, which Sega felt picked up a similar path forward for gaming that they were actually aiming for. So while Sega did miss the US launch of the Xbox, the release of Jet Set Radio Future came out in 2002, along with other Sega titles like Crazy Taxi 3 High Roller, Panzer Dragoon Orta, Sega GT2, and House of the Dead 3. Eventually, they blazed forward as a multi-platform developer, releasing games in sequence for GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. So what is Jet Set Radio Future? Technically speaking, it's a pseudo-sequel that's set in the far, far future of, get this, 2024. The plot is similar to the original and acts a little bit more like a retelling of the original's plot, focusing on the GG's attempt to gain control of this futuristic version of Tokyo To. The extra power of the Xbox helped provide more content, more gangs, and has larger, more open world style levels with time limits removed. So the soundtrack for this game leans into that more futuristic vibe, but somewhat distancing itself from its contemporary street characteristics of the original. So, to provide new content for the game, and bridging the gap from the original, Hideki Naganuma and Richard Jakes both returned to develop a refreshed take on the musical themes for the game. This time, in addition to the return of Guitar Vader, they brought in Beastie Boy's ad rock side project called BS2000, and the Latch Brothers, which was a side project of Mike D, also of the Beastie Boys, along with many others. Sadly, despite this game's praise and reviews, and it also winning categories like Best Music and Best Platformer on IGN in 2002, the game didn't actually sell very well. 80,000 copies of the game sold in the US during its first six months, and only 28,000 sold in Japan. So the legacy of Jet Set Radio is strong, and the games themselves are incredibly fun and a wild ride of style and presentation. But outside of the 2012 HD port of the original for the PS3, Xbox 360, and PS Vita, these games haven't really seen any releases since. Maybe, maybe it'll return someday, but it's probably going to be up to us to make some noise and let them know to bring this game back. Maybe since 2024 is technically just around the corner, maybe we'll see a Jet Set future. For this next block, we're going back to an uninterrupted block of tracks that really encapsulates that new feeling of Jet Set Radio Future. First, we're going to hear the bombastic track, The Concept of Love, by Hideki Naganuma, followed by Technopathetic, and a remix from the original game called Humming the Baseline DS Remix. Then, we'll hear the energetic breakbeat-inspired Bach Fresh by Richard Jakes, where he uses samples from Heavy D and the Boys, Warren G, and others. And last, we'll hear What About the Future, also by Richard Jakes, which is one of my absolute favorites from the soundtrack, with its spacey-sounding intro, science fiction-y voiceover samples, and an incredible breakout session in the end that gives the song a powerhouse finish. So enjoy these tracks, and I'll be back after that.
too tame for him.
space, there is a future for us. Here as we are, or somewhere else. And that's the show. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode of Bar Silence about the absolute time capsule of the very best music from the Jet Set Radio series on the Dreamcast and Xbox. If you want to interact with the show and tell me what you think about my selections in this episode, you can follow me on a variety of social media platforms. I am still on Twitter at Bar Silence VGM. You can also check out the show notes and find links to follow the show on Tumblr and Instagram. That's where I'll be posting various information about the games featured in this episode. If you've enjoyed this episode, I want to gratuitously name drop that I'm going to be a guest on the Aaron and Tommy Super Pod Saga podcast to talk about Jet Set Radio in the near future if we can coordinate our schedules. So if you want to hear some more about the game and some tracks that didn't appear in this episode, check the show notes for a link to check out their show. I also want to say thank you for joining me on this journey. This episode marks the first year of the show. I started this project with the idea of sharing music from video games that I've loved for years and found myself discovering new favorites and learning a lot along the way. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this last year of the show because I have even more planned going into the future. 
So stick around and tune in each month because we have great things ahead of us. Anyhow, same as always, please consider taking a moment to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find the show, because I'd really love to hear what you think. And don't forget, you can go to barsilence.com to listen to past shows if you missed any. And of course, if you're feeling giving, you can always support Bar Silence on Patreon. Also, I'd like to take another moment to thank the show's Patreon subscribers. Zoe and Elusa, thank you both for supporting this show. Your contribution helps to keep the show going each month, and I want you to know that you rock. And I very much appreciate you both. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. And then last, I want to say that this show actually picked up our first sponsor in Bold Pick and Specialty Pickles. This independently owned, flavor-forward pickle company was started in 2017, and they legit make some of the best pickles I have ever had in my life. Check them out at boldpickens.com and see if you can find them in stores near you. So to end this show, I've got a final track to play us out. This song comes as a request from listener Noah. We're going to listen to this throwback-inspired track by Hideki Naganuma called Oldies But Happies. This is an excellent, upbeat track that diversifies the soundtrack with its grandiose sound and fun vocal samples taken from Howling Mad Murdoch on the A-Team, Vincent Price, and Richard Nixon, which is very likely the only time you're ever going to hear me mention him on the show. As always, thanks again for listening, and I'll see you guys next time. Come along, children. Now we're going to have a little music. Like old time, like old time. Look, now I'll start the melody on the organ.